Are you looking for ways to improve your chances of implantation? In this video, I have 18 ways to help you do just this. Hi, my name is Susan and this is The Awesomes. Thank you so much for joining me today. So as I said, this video is all about improving your chances of implantation. Um, so the implantation of your embryo into your uterine lining. I highly suggest that you take a look at my video on the four factors that actually affect implantation um, from occurring or for implantation either being successful or not successful. That video is very important um, because when it comes to this video, uh, I know there are a lot of videos out there that talk about things that you can do during the two week wait, but I believe it's really important to know that when it comes to implantation, the real changes, the real, um, the real factors actually start long before the two week wait. So if you're really serious about working on implantation, um, then you're gonna have to start a lot earlier than just the two week wait. But in this video, I have um, a lot of tips. Most of them are things that you should be doing long before your two week wait. So at least a month, two months, three months, I'd say at least three months before you actually start trying to conceive. Um, and, but there are a few things in here that you could also be do doing during your two week wait. So in this video all about implantation, what we are really talking about here is building or developing a healthy hormonal balance as well as building up your uterine lining. So those are the two main goals that we have here. But also when it comes to just hormonal balance, this hormonal balance is really going to help um, the whole process. So it's going to help have a healthy sperm. If your partner also follows a lot of these tips, it's going to help have a healthy normal egg. It's going to help just the whole process. So let's get into what these tips are. And the first big bunch of them is gonna be all about hormonal balance. So when it comes to hormonal balance, this can be a very long process. As I said before, it's not just about the two week wait, especially when it comes to hormonal balance, this is going to be months, maybe possibly even years of really working on um, giving yourself optimal health in order to have a healthy hormonal balance. Um, so don't expect this to just be an overnight type of thing. This is going to be uh, a long process, but you deserve it. You deserve to have awesome health. You deserve to feel good and you deserve to get pregnant and have a baby. You deserve all of those things. So let's get into all of these tips. So number one, number one is healthy fat. So our hormones are built up of fats and proteins. So consuming these healthy fats is really what we need just to basically build our hormones. Number two is adaptogenic herbs. So two herbs that are adaptogenic herbs that are specifically for fertility, they're awesome for, fert for fertility, are ashwagandha and shatavari. So I have another video about uh, herbs for men and herbs for women that are really gonna boost your fertility, but those are two to look into. Um, adaptogenic herbs are basically herbs that help your body to better deal with stress. So if your body is better dealing with stress, um, stress has a huge factor on your horm hormonal balance, on the hormones that you are producing. So this is why um, using these adaptogenic herbs is going to help you out with hormonal balance as well. Number three is taking some superfoods that have also been shown to help with hormonal balance. So things like this could be maca root. Um, I recommend getting the gelatinized maca root. So there is regular maca root powder, which is basically just ground up root. And then there is the gelatinized version, which is actually, um, they've removed the starches from the maca root because it is just a root that's growing in the ground. So they've removed the starches. And so what is left over is something that is more easy to absorb. It's a more concentrated version of this product. Um, and it's also so easier to absorb, uh, more concentrated. And what was the other thing I was gonna say? I don't know, but it's, it's just a better, uh, yeah, it's better for your body. Then there's also goji berries, cod liver oil, and coconut oil. So these different foods that are, have been shown to help out with your hormones. 
Number four is to reduce fake estrogens that you are exposed to. Reduce fake estrogens. So I call them fake estrogens. That's not the technical term. The technical term is xenoestrogens. So xenoestrogens are things that you can find in your environment, in your air, in your water, um, attached to your food. So it's toxins, pollutants, pesticides, um, chemicals, all of these different things. So it's found in plastics too. All of these things that we are exposed to that are not natural, but they are acting as estrogens inside our bodies. So our bodies are thinking that they are estrogens. So it's just throwing off our natural hormonal balance. And a lot of the times it's creating a state of estrogen dominance in our bodies. Number five is using a supplement called DIM or D-I-M. It stands for a very long word that I don't know how to pronounce. Um, but look for DIM supplement. This supplement helps if you do have estrogen dominance. So what it does, even if it's from xenoestrogens, so if you have a buildup of xenoestrogens in your system causing estrogen dominance, it's a good idea to take this supplement. Um, Vitex can be another one to take for this sort of circumstance because Vitex also does reduce estrogen a bit. But I like DIM because DIM works on um, metabolizing estrogens. That is what it's doing. Whereas Vitex works more on your pituitary gland, um, which is beneficial for other things. But I feel like when it comes to xenoestrogens that it's better to metabolize those estrogens that are already in your body. Number six is to reduce your stress levels. Uh, so there's a variety of ways you can do this. Meditation, exercise, um, yoga, whatever. There's lots of things that you can do to do this, but um, actually reducing stress inside your brain takes a lot of work. And I think I've mentioned this in another video somewhere, um, but I should first get into why reducing stress is important for hormonal balance because they might seem like they are unrelated, but really um, stress has everything to do with hormones. So when you are under stress, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, whatever sort of stress, your body is going to produce stress hormones, so cortisol and adrenaline. Um, and if you are producing cortisol and, and adrenaline, your body is really prioritizing those stress hormones over any other hormones that are considered non-essential bodily functions. So this includes reproduction. And the reason for this is basically because if your body thinks that you're stressed, it thinks that there is something basically threatening your life. And so dealing with that is much more important than than pretty much anything else. Um, so that's why when you're under stress, especially chronically under stress, um, so these levels of stress hormones are high all the time, this is really gonna throw off the balance of all of the other hormones in your body. So getting into mental stress and when it comes to reducing that mental stress that is happening in your brain, um, so let's say you have something like, you know, your job is stressing you out. So you decide, okay, I'm going to quit that job today. And then, so tomorrow I should not be stressed out by it anymore. Well, you might actually find that you are still stressed out tomorrow. You're still stressed out the next day and the next day and the next day. And the reason, even though the situation is gone, your brain has still developed and still has this neural pathway that directly just really links to stress all the time because that's how you were before. You were feeling stressed all the time um, and your brain, your brain is always building pathways and it always likes to stick to the regular pathways to what is known. So your brain is going to stick to these stress pathways until you put in into practice, a practice of being not stressed. So this is where something like you could say meditation would come in. So meditation is literally the practice of, of not thinking those stressful thoughts, of thinking, thinking basically nothing, focusing on your breath or something else that is basically not stressful. So through this process, of focusing on less stressful things. You're building up new neural pathways and that is the way, basically, that is going to be the way to actually 
feel less stressed out, to reduce the mental stress that is going on in your brain. It really is a practice and it's gonna take a while. You can't just expect to remove yourself from the situation that is causing you stress, especially chronic stress. You can't just remove yourself from the situation and then expect that stress to just disappear. Because as I said, those pathways in your brain are still there, so these pathways need to be recreated. Number seven to help balance out your hormones, which is going to help with implantation, is to improve your sleep quality or quantity. So sleep is really important. Um, if you're getting a lot of sleep, you're fine. If you're not getting much sleep, then you might need to improve the quantity that you are sleeping. So sleep is our time to heal, to reset, to recharge, and all of this is really going to help our hormonal balance. Number eight is having a healthy diet. So I've already mentioned healthy fats. You should be including healthy fats into your diet so that your hormones actually have something to build them. Um, but other things are very important. Fiber is very important because fiber is very cleansing. So if there are excess and estrogens and things like that that your body is now trying to remove, um, fiber, fiber is going to attach to any of those xenoestrogens and pull them out. Um, and, and then of course, any sort of nutrient that your body needs in order to function at its best is going to be very important. So make sure you're getting your fruits and vegetables and all that. And you know, if you need to take a multivitamin. Number nine is one specific vitamin and that is vitamin C. Vitamin C really supports progesterone. So it's good to take vitamin C if you are in your two week wait, um, maybe even a little bit before your two week wait, I would suggest not taking any sort of vitamin C supplement, um, especially if it's a synthetic form of vitamin C supplement. Um, so this is something that could actually prevent implantation from, from happening. Too much vitamin C, um, mainly the synthetic form of vitamin C, can cause, uh, can cause contractions in your uterus, which is, could be very detrimental if you're trying to have an embryo implant there. Number 10 is exercise. So if you have seen my other videos on implantation, I have mentioned that it's not good to overexert yourself because this can really cause stress on the body and mess up your, your menstrual cycle, mess up your hormones, especially if this strenuous exercise is combined with uh, reduced calorie intake. It can have a negative effect on implantation and everything else that has to do with uh, trying to conceive. But the right balance of exercise, so not overexerting yourself but definitely getting your body moving is going to have a lot of benefit when it comes to implantation and hormonal balance so it's going to help you um, it, it's going to help you get rid of extra cortisol that's within your body so cardio exercise actually helps remove this cortisol from your body it burns off this cortisol essentially um, it also helps with sleep it helps actually with building up your uterine lining um, overall, exercise is just an amazing thing for our bodies that we really need in order to be our, our optimal selves. So we talked all about improving hormonal balance to improve the chances of implantation. Um, now we're going to talk about improving your uterine lining in order to help with uh, the chances of implantation. So with a thicker uterine lining and also with good blood flow to the uterus and the uterine lining, this is really going to support embryo implantation. So to improve your uterine lining, also known as your endometrium, it's all about blood. So blood flow, blood quantity, all of these things. So number one is internal warmth. And this warmth, this warming, um, is all about blood flow as well as um, just the actual heat is supposed to encourage progesterone production. And progesterone is very important when it comes to uh, to your uterine lining becoming receptive to the embryo. So to improve internal warmth, it's obviously all about keeping warm. So keep warm, cover up, um, make sure you know the heat's not too low in your house if it's winter or whatever, and also eating warming foods. So you can eat foods that are warm, like soups and things like that, or you can eat um, sort of spices that are warming, like ginger or cinnamon or like cayenne pepper. Number two is to increase iron rich foods to really help support and build up your blood supply. So foods like this could be spinach, legumes, red meat, 
um, yeah, any sort of iron rich foods. There are also iron rich herbs. Um, so you'll have to look into this one. I didn't do too much research, but I believe um, nettle, stinging nettle is a good one for an iron rich herb. Um, probably anything that's like a dark green, so red raspberry leaf. Number three is to take uterine strengthening herbs. So this is where ra red raspberry leaf comes into play again. Red raspberry leaf is a uterine strengthening herb. So is red clover and dongkui. So some of these herbs, please look into what herbs you are taking. If you are in your two week wait, you're probably going to want to eliminate most of the herbs that you might be taking. Um, Dongkui is one of those ones that you definitely do not want to be taking during the two week wait because it's a powerful herb that increases your blood cir circulation and um, basically induces menstruation. So if you're taking this when you want implantation to be happening, it could actually be, you know, almost like contracting the uterus and making your uterine lining shed when really what you want is the exact opposite. You want your uterine lining not to be shed, you want it to be hospitable for this embryo to be implanted. So please be cautious of herbs if you are currently trying to conceive and especially if you are in your two week wait. Um, but if you are just, pra if you are not practicing, if you were just at this point not trying to conceive but preparing for the TTC journey ahead of you, if you're just preparing your body, then definitely look into Dongkui. Um, Dongkui is very powerful if you're the type of person with irregular periods or um, just sort of some sort of stagnancy in your uterus. Number four is to do a fertility massage to really get your blood flowing. Um, this, again, you do not want to be doing this during your two week wait, but definitely you can do it during your follicular phase uh, before ovulation. I have just recently learned about a type of fertility massage, the Mayan abdominal massage. And this is something super easy that you can practice at home. So I really should make a quick, simple video about this one and explain why it is so amazing. I need to do more, more research for sure. But basically this abdominal massage can actually, um, it can actually correct the position of your uterus. So apparently about 75% of us actually have uteruses that are either prolapsed or just um, not quite in the right place. So during our lives, like the uterus can move around wherever the uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes, they can all sort of shift around inside of our bodies at any point in time in our lives. So there's different things that may cause this, like injury, wearing high heels, um, leading a sedentary life, um, giving birth, uh, any sort of thing, being pregnant, all these different things can have an effect on where our uterus is sitting and if it is prolapsed or not, or all these different things. So all of this I really need to do more research on, but the idea is that doing this Mayan massage, so you can go and get a Mayan massage, like a half an hour, maybe even an hour long massage that's really in depth. But then when you go home, there's sort of a maintenance massage that is super easy, like five minutes long that you can do to yourself. And this will help to basically slide your uterus back into its perfect positioning. Um, so that is something that sounds amazing to me. So I definitely want to make a future video on that specifically. Um, I don't have any experience with it. So if you do, please comment down below. I want to hear from you. Um, maybe you can even be in my video. Maybe I can interview you. Um, yeah, but that's something I will be making later, but let's get back to this video. So fertility massages in general are going to increase the amount of blood flow to your entire reproductive system. Um, they can possibly break up scar tissue and help with inflammation and fibroids and all of these other amazing things. I don't know if any of this has been studied, but there's a lot of anecdotal evidence out there saying that these things have happened. Um, so fertility massage is definitely great, at least for the whole increasing circulation aspect of it. So number five, and this is actually number five of just the improving your uterus out of the total list. It's like number 15. So if I'm saying like five or 15 or four or 14, 
that's why I'm getting my numbers all mixed up here. So number five is taking vitamin D. So vitamin D is something that a lot of us are deficient in, um, especially if you live like in the Northern Hemisphere with less sunlight, um, less hours of sunlight, whatever. If you're not getting a ton of sunlight or if you're wearing sunscreen or whatever else to avoid the sun, then chances are that you are at least a little bit deficient in vitamin D. So vitamin D is great for cell growth, so it's great for the uh, development of the uterine lining. Number six or 16 is um, vitamin E. So vitamin E is great at protecting the cells of the uterine lining. Vitamin E is an antioxidant, so it protects cells from oxidization. Number 17, um, this is mainly, now I'm going into things that you can do during your two week wait. So number 17 is mainly during your two week wait now. And this is to avoid certain herbs, alternative treatments, um, things like that, that can cause your uterus to contract, that can cause maybe too much blood flow, or that can induce menstruation. Also anything that might manipulate the uterus, such as the fertility massage, all of these things you want to be avoiding. So any of these things could be um, preventing implantation from happening just because it's sort of, uh, you know, either making the uterus contract, encouraging the uterus to shed its lining, or manipula manipulating the uterus in some way. You just don't want to be doing that during your two week wait so that your lining and the embryo has the chance to actually implant without being irritated and the lining being shed or whatever else might happen. So things like this could include, like I was saying, Dong Kui, which is a herb, which is amazing for, for trying to conceive um, if you have sort of a stagnancy in your uterus and you need that extra blood flow. It's great, it's just horrible if you're actually um, in your two week wait. So this also could include castor oil packs, which I've never talked about, but if you wanna know more about castor oil packs and trying to conceive, then please let me know in the comments below. Um, this could also include some essential oils because some, some essential oils are known to either like increase blood circulation or cause uterine contractions. Definitely herbs, like I mentioned, um, just whatever you are doing that um, is sort of like an alternative medicine sort of therapy. So obviously your regular food is okay. And you know, if you're on certain medications and your doctor says it's okay, then that's okay. But anything else that you might be being exposed to at this time, just really take a look at it and make sure it's not doing any of those things that I mentioned, like um, making your uterus contract. Number 18 is to slow down. And this really, again, this is just in your two week wait or mostly in your two week wait. Obviously in most of our lives, every single day, we should probably slow down a bit more, especially if we're living a very stressful life. But when you're in your two week wait, this is your time to really slow down, reduce your stress, um, try to take care of yourself as much as you possibly can. You know, as I said before, that stress is a huge factor when it comes to hormonal balance and trying to conceive, but this isn't even really about the stress reduction right now. It's about just focusing on yourself and thinking about yourself, taking care of yourself, nurturing yourself, loving yourself, because you are going to go through a process pretty soon of not thinking about yourself as much as you used to. Um, you know, if you are pregnant, if you do have a baby, it's gonna be all about them. So please just take that time right now to really love yourself and don't beat yourself up during this process because it's so easy to beat ourselves up and to feel like we aren't good enough and you know, we're failing and blah, blah, blah when it comes to trying to conceive. So do what you can to really honor yourself and trust your body. Know that you're, you're doing, you did whatever you could. You did as much as you could. And now it's just up to, it's up to the universe. It's up to God. It's up to your body to decide now what the outcome is. And all you can really do at this point is just let go and let, let things be the way they are, the way they're gonna pan out. Trust and believe in your body. Um, if this embryo does not implant, trust that this embryo was just 
was just not the right one. Maybe there was an abnormal amount of cells. Maybe there was some sort of genetic abnormality. Um, trust that if this embryo does not implant, then all that means is that your body is really looking out for the baby's best interest. Just trust that what's happening is going to happen and there really is a reason for it either which way it might be. And at this point, all you can do is just wait. Like the two week wait is all you can do is just wait and see. So I hope that this video has been of some benefit to you. I hope that you have found some value in all of this. I hope that you can find patience with this process because chances are if you came to this video you probably are in your two week wait and please know that you know if there is hormonal balances or whatever it is it's going to take quite a while so don't put that pressure on yourself that you need to get pregnant next cycle um, just love your body and know that your body is here to support you and to support this baby and it's doing the best that it can so all you can really do in in return is to support your body as much as it is trying to support you thank you so much for watching i really appreciate you guys being here every single week and i will see you again next time thank you bye